Good morning, Grace Covenant. This is your Thursday morning devotional, and I'm happy to have this time with you on this beautiful morning in North Carolina. I hope that you find some time today to get outside, to breathe in the air, to take a walk, to listen to the birds, um, to get grounded in in nature to let the mountains ground you and let the sky um, set your sights on on better days and on healing possibilities so last week in my devotional it was the day after the insurrection here we are a week hence and um, the president has been impeached Um, there are multiple threats um, for violence um, in the next several days before the inauguration on January 20th. Um, All 50 states are in a um, watchful defensive position um, because of potential violence um, from white extremists, from Trump extremists. Um, So So my invitation to you is, um, together, let's take a few minutes and let some things sink in. So as we move through these next few days, we can um, be the most faithful um, Jesus followers as we possibly can be. The first thing that I invite you to let sink in, and when I say sink in, I'm saying just let's dip down, let's drop down into our bodies um, try not to be so much in the mind, but but truly breathe and drop down into your body. Check in on how you're feeling. You might be having some pain, anxiety. Um, I've got my diffuser going on, going right now. I don't know if you can see that um, with some lavender. That's an anti-inflammatory, and it's it's um, a healing oil there to. Um, help settle our nervous systems, help us feel grounded. It's, it's good for, um, body trauma. It's good for, um, any kind of inflammation in the body and stress and anxiety are inflammate inflammatory. So, um, whatever you need to do today to let it sink in that, that you, that your resilience, your power, your stamina, that the root, the aquifer that that is fed from is is God's love for you that is unfailing. Um, I'm going to be preaching this week on Psalm 139. It's a beautiful psalm about just that God's love is is always with us, and it is the it is the generative primal. Um, primal force that that gave rise to each of us that is the that is the creating um, impetus for each of us and for this world you're that's yours that's in you you're made of that if you could let that sink in a little bit more deeply um i do think that that is well i feel that that is um what's gonna help us move through this with courage um, and with the possibility for for healing that isn't um, false or superficial. So the first thing I'm asking you to let sink in more deeply is God's love for you, that that's what you're made of. It's in your cells. It's in your bones. It's in your past. It's in your present. It's in your future. um, And it's unfailing. The second thing that I hope you're going to let sink in today is that what is the depth and magnitude of what is happening in our country right now. This isn't about differences of opinion. This isn't about um, division. Um, This is about a disease, a demon that really has, um, has had this country in its grip for generations and so because of the magnitude of this disease, of this demonic possession, um, of this dysfunction, um, 
white skinned people, white identified people need to understand that unity has never, ever served people of color well in this country. Um, unity is for the white folks. It's for white kin to be able to shake hands and still sit down at a dinner table together or still be family together. Um, you know, my family through the generations has been on different sides of um, wars, volatile issues. I had ancestors that were loyal to the King of England. I had ancestors that fought in the Revolutionary War. I had ancestors that fought on both sides of the Civil War. Um, I've had ancestors that <laughs> were on both sides of pretty much every horrible, horrendous issue um, that's defined the history of this country, um, including um, chattel slavery, um, the genocide of indigenous people. I have ancestral um, connections to to people who position themselves in very different ways around those issues. And I'm sure my ancestors were some of the ones calling for unity because um, that was for for them. That was for their family, for their brothers, for their sisters, for their cousins, for their parents and their grandparents and aunts and uncles. Um, and neighbors, but that's never served the impacted, those most impacted, um, black, indigenous, people of color um, lose when we lead with the call to unity. So I, I'm inviting you to let that sink in, that the, the language of unity is a white-centered goal when there's social unrest that the call to unity is for the ruling class. It's for, um, for the comfortable, for the people who really um, yearn and want the status quo to stay in place. Um, the the discomfort that that we are feeling right now as a country is not new. For those who've been the most impacted by violence and white terror and systemic racism those things have made life not make sense for a long time um, for people of color and so just remembering that that when you hear that word unity coming out of your mouth that's a white centered aspiration and so letting that sink in disrupting some of that impulse that we have to to mollify to to calm it's not that calm is bad but who who's at whose expense and it's kind of like an abusive relationship when um when the abuser comes back after a, a rage after physical violence after emotional battering and says um i'm sorry can't we just be a family again. Um, I love you. And it's just that, you know, you, when you do that, it makes me upset. Those are not words that truly create safety or liberation. Those are not words that are and aspirations that are grounded in God's healing love. So the next thing that I hope you'll let sink in is just, um, Checking in with your body about what it feels like to shift frameworks. You know, if division and unity are the the kind of um, that that's the continuum you've been working with in terms of how to feel good about the world versus how to feel unsettled about the world, I invite you to to shed that, to let it go, to literally like wipe it off of yourself. Let it, let that slough off. Um, that's, that's serving the wrong God. <laughs> that's serving a false God, the idol of the status quo. And try on for size. Let's put on, put on um, some new clothes, some new skin that, that allows you to explore what it means that the continuum is not 
division and unity, but um, oppression and liberation. Um, Jesus is a liberating, um, a liberating incarnation of God's hopes for us. Jesus taught us what it is that God wants for the world, and that is liberation. Liberation from the bondage of sin, from systems of oppression, from hatred, from self-hatred, from distrust, from fear of death, from fear of otherness, from um, fear of the stranger within ourselves. That's why Christ came to teach us um, that God's God's hopes for us are, are liberative. And so if that continuum that kind of helps you check in the metric for whether things are are right with the world and well with your soul or 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 in a very real and upsetting sense, just out of whack and um, untenable, if that is if that metric is defined by oppression and liberation. Just try that on for size and let that sink in. Move around the world the next few days with that as your metric and see what comes up for you. See what you feel. What what does liberation and freedom feel like for you? What does oppression feel like? What are the things that have you in bondage? What are the systems of oppression that that you benefit from and what does it feel like to be to have those chains on that your that your well-being is somehow tied to another person's oppression that's not freedom so letting it sink in that true liberation is mutual it's shared and that's what our country is lurching toward, hopefully, right now, is shedding that paradigm of division and unity as our wellness check and, and putting on some new, some new clothes, um, putting on a new way of moving around the world that, that allows us to say it's, it's oppression and liberation. That's how we do our wellness check. And we are not well in that department. I'm praying for you in these troubling times. I'm praying that you know you're loved. And remember the first thing that you're letting sink in today is God's deep and fierce and abiding love for you. That's why you're here. That's what you come from. And that's where we're going together. Take care, Grace Covenant. Love to you and gratitude for this community.